Okay, and I'm just going to check that that's centered again. Okay, so I'm going to choose to do the <clears throat> more complex example that we did in, uh, in the uh, last tutorial with the elimination method. So that one was 2x plus 3y is equal to negative 6. That was our first equation. And we also had 5x minus 2y is equal to a negative 15. Okay, so this one here was more complex, and we'll put that as equation B, uh, more complex than the other example because none of the variables have a single coefficient in front of them, making it easier to work with. So we have to choose uh, you know, one of the variables from one of the equations to solve for. So it doesn't really matter which one we choose for. Choose in this case. I'm going to choose uh, solving for y in equation A. So let's solve. Let's uh, do solve for y in equation A. That's what I'm going to do. So I have to subtract 2x from both sides. So that would be if I took this and went 2x off here and 2x off here, it would say that 3y is equal to negative 6 minus 2x. Okay, and then we still have to divide by 3. So divide everything by 3. So y is equal to, well, 6 divided by 3. We could do it singly or we could put everything over Three. So there's two ways you can do it. I'm going to write it out like this first. So we could leave it in that form or we could put it in the form of, if you'd like, negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. Subtract 2 thirds x. Both are uh, equally valid equations depending on how you like to write them. So either one of those would be fine. Once we have the value for y, we then have to sub in or sub it into b, sub y into b, okay, for y I guess. So we know that this value here, we're going to sub it in in equation b. So we know that 5 x is there, minus 2, and now we have to sub in the expressions here. So I'm going to sub in this part here. So this is going to be negative 6 minus 2x on top over 3. And that was our value that we had for y, and that's going to equal negative 15. So continuing with our, our solving, we have to do our multiplying here. And what we do when we're multiplying, we pretend like this is negative 2 over 1. So then, as you know, with multiplying, you would multiply the, the numerators and denominators. So there would always be a 3 on the bottom. So you would be still doing the distributive property here like this. So you would still have 5x would still be here. You'd go minus 2 or negative 2, subtract negative 6. Well, that is 12. over 3. And then you would go negative 2, subtract negative 2x. Well, that is positive 4x over 3. Okay, And that's going to equal negative 15. So we have a problem here in that we have a denominator here. So we want to eliminate this denominator, and one way you can do that in solving equations is multiply everything in the equation, every single uh, value, by 3. So if we do that, we should be able to uh, eliminate the 3's on the bottom. So multiply this by 3, multiply this by 3, multiply this by 3, and multiply this by 3. That would not change our answer at all, it would just enlarge everything by the same factor. 
So 5x times 3 is 15x. Uh, 12 times 3, that would be 36 divided by 3, which would give us 12 again. Again, 4x times 3 would be 12x divided by 3. That would give us 4x. And negative 15 times 3 is negative 45. Okay, so we have now an expression that we can solve without any uh, fractions to worry about. So I'm going to have 19x when I add the x's plus 12 is equal to negative 45. So we'll subtract 12 from both sides. So 19x is equal to 45 subtract 12. That would be negative 57. So divide by 19 and x is equal to negative Three. Okay, I'm just going to check to make sure this still fits in the field of view. Okay, and uh, then we would, once we have that, we would now solve for y in the other equation. So, solve for y. So we know that x is negative three. We can take one of the equations from the top, and we can just say two times negative. I'm using a equation a times negative three plus 3y equals negative 6. So again, negative 6 plus 3y equals negative 6. Add 6 to both sides, 3y equals 0. So y is equal to 0. So now we have our solution. Negative 3 and 0. Probably wise for us to quickly check this, so we can take our solution, and I'm going to do a check over here, make sure, or actually what I'll do is I'll slide this up a bit, and then we can work out the check right underneath here. So I'm going to use equation B, 5 times negative 3 minus 2 times 0 is equal to negative 15. Negative 15 minus 0 is equal to negative 15, which is the same. So that would be the tutorial for the substitution method and how that works using the same two examples we did with the elimination method. In the next tutorial, we're going to be focusing on solving complex equations with fractions and decimals and brackets in them.